We're all floating in this dust ring. Every planet has a ring around it. Saturn just has the most pronounced one that we can see. But zodiacal light is obvious. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought this, the tripod thing was going to drop here. I just saw my reflection and scared myself. Oh, never, okay. never mind. You're safe. Yeah. And things like this you see a lot of in the web. They are very easily done in Photoshop. These are the total eclipse of the moon out of the Vista House in the Gorge. That's dynamic. Yeah, and that's, I took it out of the telescope and placed it into the picture just to give it some drama, oversized. Uh, this is Aurora Borealis in the Gorge. This was done about two summers ago. I didn't even know it was going to happen. A gentleman, astronomer in Seattle, said, Mark, I hear there's going to be Aurora tonight. You should go out to your gorge. So I drove out there. Nobody was there at the Women's Forum in the Vista House right over here east of me. And I saw these purple bars of light with green glow across the horizon here. And so I was just enthralled. I just started clicking away my camera. This is a big panorama too. It's about oh, 10 or 20 photos wide, all stitched together. With the moon rising over a large mountain to the east here in the gorge. Oh, other lights in the gorge, the Bonneville Power Station. The Andromeda Galaxy is actually in this photo at two and a half million light years out. Um, as it was in this other one, I didn't mention that. Okay, one more here, Mark. And okay, good. Yeah, here's, someone asked about distances of stars, but when we look out of our galaxy, which is about 150,000 light years across, only 150,000 light years. Andromeda is two and a half million light years away. And it's one of the closest, and we can see it with our naked eye just looking up. You don't need any optical aid. You can see it if you know exactly where to look. And the Triangulum Galaxy here is three million light years away. A very tiny one under Andromeda, but they're here smaller in this photo, so. There's a lot of different dimensions here, a lot of things about art uh, that's much different than doing photography. The idea I just wanted to mention as a last thing to remember, uh, why would artists still do artwork instead of just taking all these beautiful photos? Well, there's something quite interesting and magical that happens. When you look through a telescope and you're actually asked to sketch what you see, don't worry about how good of an artist you think you are or not. Just start making sketches and you will remember much more of what you see if you make a sketch. It forces your eyes to focus down and get closer and closer as you do the details in the sketches. And so you see uh, an old world art that's still quite popular today and being used by many astronomy artists. And I think it's important for education. And they're probably gonna hear about this a lot later on too. Uh, the digital world changes a lot. Anyway, I'll leave you set up. You probably wanna get going to start observing through the big scopes. Okay, and, I wanna have you guys go back over here just a minute or a couple of things. Let's give a round of applause here for Mark. Oh, thank you. Thanks a lot. You did a very good job. Oh, thanks. You did really good art. Oh, thanks. You're very good at your job. Oh, there's much more here than that. There's a lot more to see. I forgot one of my portfolios tonight of art, so I'm, I apologize. <laughs> Wait, I had a question. Oh, thanks. thanks. Is that a telescope? That is, and the camera's actually tracking on this one here. It's, um, it is very slowly like a clock, and you can't actually see it moving, so, but it is moving. So, right now, it is. soon, it will be like right here. It's, it's moving so slow you can't see, like looking at the minute hand on your watch. We'll give it some light here and see if it's uh... It is very slow, just like a clock, like the hands on a clock. How do you do such good art? Uh, you practice a lot. You start when you're very young. Like at your age, I probably start sketching and... Uh... Oh, I gave it up for years. I got into using the camera a lot. And then uh, I bought a telescope with my very picking money when I was uh, about 13. <laughs> I did the same thing. Did you? You bought a telescope? Yes. Really? Well, good for you. Do you still have that telescope today? Yes, I do. That's, I, I still have mine, too. I kept it in the box all these years, but I know. I've acquired many other ones. This one was given to me to teach overseas in the Fiji Islands okay. uh, a few years ago, and I take it, I've taken it across the country to do sidewalk astronomy. I do it in Portland a lot, too. And then the bigger telescope I still got in the car I didn't pull out. It would be like the ones you're going to look through over here. It's a big Dobsonian. So, um, yeah, I had a... Uh, Time in Hawaii, a oh, big wow. telescope. You're lucky. I've been to the Fiji Islands, but not Hawaii. Oh, it's fabulous. Yeah, and my daughter's been there, and a lot of my other family has been there, but I've never gone to Hawaii yet yeah. in my life. Went up there, and I got what was it, 25 minutes, mm -hmm. and it was just the most. I feel like I've talked to you somewhere before. I've I think done it. Have. Like at another Girl Scouts event yes. last spring, last year. Yes. Up in the gorge somewhere. Yes. Yeah. It's a fantastic. I mean, that nebula that I was looking at, and then the but this is beautiful. Yeah. Oh, the photographs, yeah. It's very easy. Yes. Oh, yeah. oh, that's, yeah. That's just easy to go to film. That was the, yeah, that was the Lovejoy comet, and it was uh, photographed, and then I took a shot of myself in the studio at home with the telescope. This is beautiful. You should oh. set this. Oh, thanks. But I'm dead serious. Yeah, I think the art world is not. Oh, what are you talking about? Who cares? I guess a lot of artists are very critical. We, we don't, uh, 
Yeah. We don't see the value in our works, I guess the public does, and we should probably realize that. You um, need to realize that. Yeah, you and seriously I, I've talked about it on National Public Radio over the years and other I mean, look other at this. Venues. This is fantastic. Yeah, these are, uh, these are two of the more recent works I've done in the last year. This was just done about a month ago up in, in Central California, uh, Northern California, in Trinidad. As I explained to you, this is the Milky Way. Uh, you're going to see the side of the south and Mars and Saturn and Taurus making this triangle. But, uh, so oh, and there's a comet up there. It's all the kids. There's a, there's a green, green comet here. I don't want to touch it because it's a silverized paper. It's a little comet called. Uh, so, uh, what? I'll move north. It's faded away. It doesn't have much of a tail, but there's no tail on it. the left. Oh, that's a satellite or a plane. Yeah, that just flew through a 10 second point. It happens a lot in astrophotography. Uh, we always catch accidentally uh, satellites and planes with the planes. I was hoping you'd let me talk a little longer than I would with the artwork, but I just, I might go, I step over the right and I'm just getting between all the plots and different artwork. Well, thanks. It's really, uh, um, it's a process of many things I've done here. Oh, I should tell the kids. In 14 months, we're going to see this in the sky here, Lord. We'll be the first to see it in the nation. I should, I should tell them. Jim should tell them.